I'm back with the Phillips soup maker and I'm going to try a different kind of soup today. We're experimenting through the different types and the different functions of this Phillips soup maker because I haven't had it that long yet but we're coming up with some good results. So today we're going to make some butternut squash soup and this is going to be a creamy blended soup. Nice and thick and no chunks in it hopefully. So let's see what this soup maker will do with the ingredients that we have. I'm actually going to follow a recipe that came from the book that came with the soup maker. And this has some great recipes in it. And you can see by all the page markers I have here <laughs> of ones that we want to try. Either ones that we'd like to make for ourselves or some that we would like to show you to. Also some on our pasta word channel we have some in mind for that too. So today we're starting near the beginning here with the butternut squash soup. So let me show you what goes into it. Okay I will say I'm learning as I go on this soup maker but the results have been nice. The uh, one thing about it is there's a very tight tolerance for the fill line. So it's down in here I don't know if you can see it in that view of the camera, but it's about here on the on the side. And if we put too much into it, it won't uh, allow room for the soup to be blended. So we have to be pretty much on the mark with the recipe instructions or when you're figuring out for yourself what to put in, you want to make sure you don't put too much. I always have a tendency to put too much and if I have a little extra of this or that <laughs> I will use it. Alright let's plug this thing in. Now I'm using the shortcut today, butternut squash chunks that are already cut. When I went to the store today I checked does it cost me more to cut the butternut fresh or does it cost me more to buy it already cut, peeled, trimmed and cut into chunks. Well, I guess because of the volume, this is less expensive. Now, it's not as fresh. Yes, that's true, but it's still good and fresh. So, today I'm going to use it. I don't always do that. I'd rather buy from the local farmers, but it's not the time of year for that right now. So, we're going to go with two cups of the chunks. Alright, I'm not going to stuff it extra like I usually do. This was a 20 ounce package here, so I used about half. Alright, let's put them right into the canister. A lot of you have asked me different uh, things, how this thing works. Is it easy to clean? Yeah, it's really easy to clean. It's nothing to stop you from scrubbing it. It's really simple. You, actually, I even put some soapy water in and blended it before I tried to clean it, so it was so easy. Okay, next we're going to need about one and a half cups of potatoes. So I'm going to peel these real quick and put them in the measuring cup. I'll be right back. Okay, I have one and a half cups here. I didn't use two of those potatoes, but we'll put them in. They're chunked up nice. All right, then I need a bunch of green onions. They want about a quarter cup of green onions. So let me clean these up here and I'll chop up a quarter cup for you. All right, I'm just going to cut off the roots. Get rid of those. Put the little stragglers on there. I just love to go to the store in the morning and then come home and make the, the meal with the nice fresh stuff. It's such a big difference. So I'm going to cut these small, but you know what? This blender in this soup maker will take care of getting everything down to size. Well, let's just make sure we have a quarter cup since we're being exact today. I'm going to chop up a little more. All 
All right. There we have a nice quarter cup. Let's dump that in. We have room for two and a half cups of broth. It asked for vegetable broth as we could make this a vegetarian soup. But I'm going to add bone broth here for some extra nutrition. And I'm using Thai, thai style only because the recipe calls for ginger. And I'm going to use the soup that already has the ginger in it. And you can see the color of this soup is really nice and rich. It's going to make a good flavored soup. And the bone broth makes it full of nutrition. So I'm going to measure two and a half right there. All right, well, pour that in. Then we need a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And we can add ginger too, but since the ginger's already in there, I'm only going to add cinnamon. However, if you don't have the ginger in your soup, add a half a teaspoon of ground ginger. I'm just going to pour a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon in here. Ooh, that kind of stuff makes that squash taste really good. All right, here we go. That's what it looks like. And it's exactly in between the minimum and maximum fill lines. I just can't believe that, but it is. And I don't know, can you see this? It's exactly in between the minimum and maximum fill lines. So this is perfect. The other ingredients that I still have on the counter here, I have some feta cheese and I have some nice fresh sage. And we're going to use that as toppings on the soup when we're finished. So right now, let's get down to business and turn this on. You can see the Z-shaped blade that we have in here and that's what does the work. Maybe you saw some of the other videos where we were showing how to use the Phillips, but you can see on here the different settings. And so far we used one of the settings to make a hot chocolate and we used one to make a chunky soup. So today we're going to go to the one that makes a creamy soup and blends it. Now I just want to show you this because a lot of people are deciding whether they want to have this appliance or not. In the table of contents, the recipes are set up to follow the same picture that you see on the soup maker. And the one that we're making now is in the pureed soup. That means it's going to blend it. That's what that symbol means. So in here is the butternut squash soup. And that means that we're going to press the first button here to make sure that it gets blended very well and we won't end up with any kind of chunky soup. So let's get this on the menu. The blending, we got the blending function lit up. We press start. And you'll hear this soup maker, it'll start to heat up from the bottom. The element is in the bottom and as it gets warm the blending blade will spin off and on off and on until the soup is completely finished while the soup is heating up and blending I'm going to cut up some nice sage leaves I wish you could smell these, but this is going to be such a nice topping. There it goes. There it goes. It's going to go off and on until it starts to get those vegetables hot and chopped. We're going to put like three leaves on top of this soup, along with some nice crumbled feta cheese. Oh boy, don't you love that? Nice creamy chunks here. Oh, the feta cheese, that's what we're going to use as a topping. And I'm going to chop up these three nice leaves of sage. It'll give us some great flavor in this soup. All right, let's let the soup maker do its job and I'll get the sage leaves ready to go. 
the blending cycles on and off as the soup gets hot and now the soup canister is hot to the touch so it's really warming up in there rather quickly won't be long it makes the soup in about 18 minutes you can hear how the sound starts to change as the soup gets thinner when it pulses off and on but some people have asked me does this keep the steam inside the pot or does steam escape well you can see here how much the steam does escape and you do get a nice smell of it cooking but some of the steam does evaporate out of the pot it's coming around from the edges you can see where the moisture is so if that answers that question I'm happy to be able to show you that and we probably have about 10 minutes left to go it sounds like this soup is liquidy now by the way the blades sounds when it's spinning all right now the soup maker has stopped and it went back to flashing so we're going to open it up and take a look and by the sound of it and the smell I think we're going to be very happy. All right, take a look in there. Nice golden butternut soup. And you can see the cinnamon in there, the creaminess, no chunks whatsoever. Wow, is that pretty golden. Golden. Let's pour it into a mug here and we'll sample. All right, I have a, a mug ready to show you how it looks. Look how nice and thick. Oh, you soup lovers. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to love this one. Woo. Now there's plenty more. There's probably enough for three or four of that size mug. And that's a big mug. You know, I always invite you to use your salt and pepper if you like. Season things however you want. You know, everybody's different. But you're always welcome to add your own type of seasoning. Now here we're going to add some of these chopped up sage leaves. I think sage has such a wonderful smell and taste. We'll let that simmer on there. And then we'll take some of the nice feta cheese crumbles. And this is a nice brand that's a little bit creamy. And we'll put some of that on top. Wow. I just need one more little piece there. <laughs> All right, I think this came out really nice looking. Let's see how it tastes. Mix a little bit of that creamy feta in there. Look how it starts to melt and stir in the sage. Mm. Mm, I must try that. Ooh, that looks good, doesn't it? Mm. Wow. Mm, that is good. That is a good cup of soup. <laughs> I hope you get a chance to try this recipe. I'm falling in love with the Phillips soup maker. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you like it? Okay, well, if you do like it, I'll put the link there for you. But if you would like to make this recipe, you can make it on a stovetop also. So have fun with it. It's a nice recipe. Make some alterations to make it your own. And enjoy this soup. Thanks for watching.